First question. Say one more time. What really means an award like this? Um. This uh, this award it, it means a lot. I don't I don't win a lot of things, so I don't, I don't take it for granted. Um, it's it's interesting though because you know it's a, it's an award for a couple movies that haven't quite come out yet, and I've I've seen those movies and I'm really proud of them, which is saying a lot for me because I'm really really tough on myself. But I I hope that uh, I hope audiences uh, love them as much as I do. I hope I can live up to this award. Is there anything you won't do for a company? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me think of what I've done so far. Um, played a character who can will himself into becoming fully erect in a room full of dudes simply <laughs> by concentrating hard enough. Check that off the list. Um, I'm a drug dealer who sells a drug called Holy Fucking Shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess the answer is no. <laughs> Dave, why do you always think you're being uh, cast as the asshole? <laughs> <laughs> trying to veer away from that now. I think, I, think I've, I think I've exhausted the asshole role. But uh, at first it was really fun for me just because they were characters that were completely outside of who I am in real life, and so it was just kind of fun to explore that. But after a while, it's like you play enough assholes, and people are going to think that's who you are. And so it was uh, it was time to make a shift. And these next few movies coming out, hopefully, uh, are more protagonist characters and slightly more likable. But who knows? Maybe I'll come off as a asshole protagonist. <laughs> Do you enjoy being directed by your brother? Yeah, so I just uh, finished a movie called The Disaster Artist. Um, it was the first time my brother has directed me uh, in a role that was more than just a cameo. And it was really fun. Uh, it's, a, it's a tricky topic to discuss just because it's, it's one of these things where, you know, I, I, I love and respect my brother so much, but for a long time I wanted to pave my own path and, and, and do my own thing and so it, it finally felt like the right project, the right time for us to just collaborate and me to stop caring what people think and, and if people think that I'm, you know, writing his coattails, they can think that, I know I'm doing my own thing and uh, he's just, he's, he's the most happy when he's directing, when he's behind the camera and um, and we just, we have very similar sensibilities, and so it was really fun to finally like fully dive into a project together. Is it difficult to, to uh, have a famous sibling and working in, in the shadow, and then how do you reach that point where you're like, I don't care, we're brothers, we get it all, let's go. How do you reach that point? Uh, I mean, I reached that point a long time ago. It's just more of what the public thinks. Uh, and I've noticed a slight shift in, in terms of people kind of giving me my own credibility, which is nice. Um, it's, it's, it's tough, you know, it's a blessing and a curse. It's like, I don't, I don't take for granted the fact that when I first started out, he helped me get a manager, you know, that's a huge thing. But then from there, it's like, no one's gonna cast me just because I'm James Franco's little brother, you know? I, I, had, to, I had to work my ass off and, and in a way, it's like because of who he is, there was almost more of a spotlight on me when I was first starting. And so for most young actors, it's like you go into an audition, you, you fall on your face, you do a horrible job, and the casting directors don't remember you. But for me, it was like I was doing that same thing, but everyone's like, okay, mental note, James Franco's little brother sucks. And so it was just almost like a bigger hurdle to overcome in a, in a way. But, uh, Again, at this point, it's like people are going to think what they think, and uh, I know I've been true to who I am, and uh, I know that as, as similar as we are in certain ways, there's certain t uh, projects that he can tackle that I can't, and vice versa. One, one last question. Can we do all not about my brother? <laughs> <laughs> so I think what I mean, he, he took, uh, you know, he went to UCLA, exactly, uh, he went about the things, so I think I'm wondering if she would do the same. I went to USC. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> 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 neighbors too. And how does it push the boundaries that neighbors set up? Yeah, so uh, 
The first Neighbors didn't really lend itself to a sequel, and so I know Nick Stoller and the writers had a very difficult time figuring out a storyline that felt honest to the first movie, but also uh, unique enough to stand on its own. And I know Nick would tell you right now that it was one of the hardest things he's ever done, trying to get the script in the right place, but uh, it really works. The movies, it's so funny. I mean, there's not a lot of great comedy sequels, but I genuinely think this is, this is, uh, you know, as good as the first one. And I'm, I just, I love those guys so much. They're, they're the funniest guys out there and they make me seem a lot funnier than I actually am. And I'll do anything with those guys. I'll make as many neighbors as people want. I'll do neighbors 52 if they want. So. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Dave Franco. Everybody. Great, thank you guys.